Good afternoon. The NATO Secretary General is going to give you an overview of the NATO Russia Council meeting and will take uh, questions. Uh, Secretary General, please. Good afternoon. We have just uh, uh, conducted a meeting of the NATO Russia Council. It was a useful meeting with uh, frank and open uh, discussions. Ukraine was uh, the first item on our agenda. Uh, and this is important because Russia's actions uh, in Ukraine have uh, undermined uh, Euro-Atlantic security. Allies and Russia have uh, profound and persistent disagreements on the crisis. There was not a meeting of minds today, but it was an opportunity to clarify our positions uh, and uh, to exchange uh, views on the crisis in Ukraine. Allies expressed uh, the views that uh, they set out at the summit in Warsaw. NATO allies uh, do not and will not recognize Russia's illegal uh, and illegitimate annexation of uh, Crimea. We should all work towards the settlement of the conflict in eastern Ukraine by diplomatic and peaceful means. Doing this would allow Ukraine to develop uh, from uh, violent outside uh, interference and it would contribute to an overall improvement in relations between NATO and uh, Russia. We then discussed military activities, transparency and risk reduction. Everyone around the table uh, has a responsibility to ensure that our relations are characterized by predictability, uh, confidence and stability. We have rules uh, for military activities, both bilateral and multilateral. We have all worked hard to develop them over the years. We should respect both the letter and the spirit of those rules. Transparency and risk reduction is particularly important if we are to avoid incidents, accidents and misunderstandings. So in the spirit of transparency, NATO briefed Russia on the important decisions we took in Warsaw last week to enhance our security. Russia briefed on uh, the steps they are taking. Russia also raised a proposal on air safety in the Baltic Sea. Allies will study this proposal carefully. I welcome that Russia has signaled that it wants to pursue risk reduction measures. This is something that allies have been advocating for a long time. So I look forward to further discussions on this issue with Russia. Finally, we discussed the security situation in Afghanistan, including the regional terrorist threat. Afghan security forces continue to do their job with remarkable resilience and courage. But challenges remain. I informed the Council about NATO's decision at the Warsaw Summit to sustain our military presence in Afghanistan beyond 2016 with approximately the current troop levels. I also reported to the NATO Russia Council on our commitment to continue to fund the Afghan security forces until 2020. And I underlined that President Ghani and Chief Executive Abdullah at our summit in Warsaw reiterated their commitment to reform. For almost uh, 20 years, the NATO-Russia Council has been an important forum for dialogue. It is an all-weather forum. Today, we had a very useful discussion. We addressed some of the most important issues on the Euro-Atlantic security agenda. This shows the value of the NATO-Russia Council. Dialogue is particularly important in the current circumstances. Our dialogue will continue. And with that, I'm ready to take your uh, questions. 
Secretary-General, uh, Vladimir Dobrovolsky, uh, Russian News Agency, Rea Novosti. Uh, what will be the next step in your dialogue? Will it be the ambassadorial le uh, level meeting as now, or will it be a ministerial one? And will you consider some, uh, consider some concrete document in uh, relation to uh, this uh, risk reduction measures? Thank you. Thank you. We will have new meetings in the NATO-Russia uh, Council, and we will uh, uh, address issues like risk reduction and transparency, and uh, we will now also look into uh, the proposal put forward by Russia on uh, air safety uh, and uh, also related to transponders uh, in the uh, Baltic Sea uh, uh, region. Um, we haven't decided a new date for the next meeting, uh, 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 and uh, 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 we haven't decided the format of the next uh, meeting. The, the, what we decided in 2014 when we suspended the practical cooperation was that we would uh, maintain uh, the NATO-Russia Council as a platform for political dialogue at, at, at ambassadorial level and above. Uh, but we haven't made any decisions uh, about the formats of the next uh, uh, Council meeting. Channel One, Russia. Don't you think it's illogical that NATO pays great attention to unreal Russian threat instead of, for example, dealing with real danger like ISIS? NATO has to be able to respond to many different challenges at the same time. <clears throat> and at our summit in Warsaw, we made important decisions uh, to continue to play a key role in the fight against international terrorism. Uh, we, for instance, decided to uh, continue our military presence in Afghanistan. Our military operation in Afghanistan is our biggest military operation ever. And the reason why we are in Afghanistan is to uh, fight international terrorism, is to prevent Afghanistan once again becoming a safe haven for international terrorists. We also decided to step up our support uh, for uh, Iraq, to start to do training inside Iraq to enable Iraq uh, to be stronger uh, in its efforts to stabilize its own country and to uh, fight terrorism. We, uh, we, we also decided to do more uh, when it comes to support from NATO to the international coalition fighting ISIL uh, by providing AWACS support uh, to the coalition. <laughs> and we decided to work more closely with partners in the region like Jordan and Tunisia uh, building their capacity uh, to fight uh, terrorism and to stabilize their own countries. So NATO is playing a key role in the international efforts to fight uh, terrorism uh, and we decided to step up our efforts at the Warsaw Summit. BBC. Uh, yes, Secretary General Jonathan Marcus from the BBC. Um, you've mentioned the discussion about and the Russian proposals on uh, air safety, transponders and, and so on. Uh, was there any detailed discussion of Russian SNAP exercises and the need for uh, notification and much greater transparency of short notice Russian military activities? Yes, we addressed exactly those challenges. And uh, the thing is that uh, we already have some mechanisms, some documents, uh, which ensure transparency and predictability. And one of the main tools uh, is the Vienna document, which regulates how uh, exercises are announced, uh, international observers, and the whole aim of that is to uh, make sure that predictability, transparency, is in place when we conduct military exercises. Because we have seen that military exercises can be used as a disguise for aggressive actions. Uh, for instance, the uh, annexation of Crimea uh, took place uh, uh, so, in connection with uh, a SNAP exercise of, uh, of uh, Russia. Um, so we strongly support those uh, rules and those uh, guidelines. Uh, the important thing is that they have to be respected. Uh, both uh, um, the letter uh, in the agreement, but also the spirit. And one of the challenges we have seen recently, or over the past years, is that Russia use some of the loopholes in the Vienna document to conduct all the SNAP exercises and thereby uh, they also uh, are able to uh, uh, um, uh, undermine international inspections uh, of the exercises. 
So we are strongly in favor of modernizing the Vienna document. Uh, and NATO allies have put forward in Vienna proposals on how to, for instance, address SNAP exercises in the Vienna document framework. Uh, this is, of course, not negotiated in a NATO framework. This is negotiated in the OCE framework. But NATO allies are active and they have put forward, put forward proposals to strengthen uh, the Vienna document as a tool for transparency and risk reductions related to military uh, exercises. So Deutsche Zeitung. Daniel Brössler, Süddeutsche Zeitung. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about what, how the Russian proposals on risk reductions looked like regarding, for example, transponders? Uh, and second question, um, I, uh, I hear there was a, a proposal for military-to-military -military contacts. Uh, is uh, NATO in a position to agree to that, or would decisions uh, have to be changed because uh, this would be beyond, uh, go beyond political discussions uh, with Russia. Russia uh, proposed uh, a way forward on how we can address issues related to uh, transponders and air safety. Uh, we uh, stated clearly that we welcome uh, that Russia uh, is ready to sit down and discuss air safety, transparency, and including transponders. Uh, but we also asked for more uh, details. And I think it's up to Russia to uh, describe the details of their uh, proposal. Uh, but we welcome that uh, Russia is, uh, is showing more interest in these issues. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, therefore, we will also then uh, look into the proposal and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and also ask for more uh, details. I think it is important to understand that transponders, of course, is important, but it's only one element in a broader uh, picture related to air safety and uh, uh, risk reduction. Uh, because uh, the basic thing is, a, is, a, is, of course, safe behavior, is to fly in a safe and professional way. And we have seen some examples of unsafe uh, uh, activity in the air uh, by Russian planes busing uh, a US ship in the Baltic flying close to NATO planes. Uh, so the, the first thing is of course to just address the behavior of military aircrafts uh, 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 in the Baltic uh, uh, Sea. Uh, I would also like to underline that, uh, that um, we are constantly looking into how we can make sure that the way we conduct our exercises and our military activities are done in the most, uh, as I say, predictable and safe way. Meaning that NATO planes uh, routinely fly with the transponders on uh, when they fly under NATO command in Europe. Uh, different NATO allies have different practices, uh, partly related also to uh, exercises and some different operational reasons for not always turning the transponders on. Regardless of this, it is important to sit down, to look into the issue, and to find out how we can enhance air safety, uh, especially in, in the Baltic uh, region. Agence France Presse? No, Agence France Presse, please. Oh, sorry, I forgot that, that's important. Okay. Uh, we, military lines of communication, military to military lines of communication, they are open. What we discussed now in the meeting uh, is how we can make sure that they are functioning and that they are uh, used in the best possible way. And there we still have some way to go. Uh, so I also welcome that uh, as part of the discussions related to transparency, risk reduction, air safety, also the direct lines of military to military communication is now very much on the agenda. And hopefully we can also enhance the way these lines of communications are working uh, and thereby also using them as a tool to increase uh, air safety and, uh, and transparency. So now we move to Agence France Presse. Um, Secretary General, on these lines of communication between military, for the military to military con contacts, uh, what is hampering the efforts to try to revive them and to relaunch these contacts? And uh, was there, uh, were there concrete discussions on how this could be improved? I've heard that the procedures were very heavy. 
and there is also, of course the political situation but the and the military situation but the procedures are very heavy has there have there been concrete discussions on how this uh, could happen and when do you think um, would it need another NATO Russia Council to address the um, transponders issue and the air safety uh, risk reduction issue in the Baltics or can that be uh, discussed in other fora? Thank you. The issue of air safety, uh, including transponders, which is one element of this broader picture, uh, uh, is, uh, is something which absolutely can be discussed also in other fora. Uh, and, uh, and I think also important, it is important to remember that NATO can play a role in Brussels, uh, coordinating our positions, our understanding, uh, related to processes which are taking place, for instance, in the OC uh, context. So, for instance, uh, one of the forums or platforms where it's relevant to discuss issues related to air safety and risk reduction is the OC, including the Vienna document. So, uh, so therefore, NATO can coordinate at least the position of NATO allies uh, related to processes and negotiations that take place in another format uh, in, in Vienna, in the OCE framework. And one of the reasons why that is relevant is that we partly have some tools, some document, documents and agreements already, and partly because the OCE framework is broader. Uh, for instance, in, in the Baltic region, uh, you have uh, Russia and you have NATO countries, uh, which are part of the NATO-Russia Council, but you also have Sweden and Finland. And Sweden and Finland are not part of the NATO-Russia Council. So that underlines the importance of also looking for broader contexts, like, for instance, the OSCE. Then uh, ICAO uh, is also an institution which has addressed air safety in different ways, uh, and, uh, and is also irrelevant. So the issues of where we're going to address it, how we're going to address this, are exactly the issues which we are now I was just looking into to find the best possible way to address these, uh, the air, air safety and, uh, and transponder issue. Wall Street Journal. Um, Mr. Uh, Secretary General, uh, the Russian uh, government recently sacked a number of admirals in the Baltic uh, Sea Fleet. Um, have you seen any change in the dynamics uh, in that region since this change? Um, did this come up in the meeting at all? Uh, and also related, as you're talking about transparency in this region, to what level of access, um, what level of reporting are you going to do about the battalions of, uh, to the Russians? What level of transparency on a day-to-day -day basis might you give them about your actions? Uh, the question related to the admirals in the Russian Navy did not, did not come up uh, in the meeting and it's not for NATO to comment on uh, that kind of issues. Uh, uh, we are transparent uh, on our activities and our presence. We, for instance, we briefed on uh, the four battalions uh, we will uh, have uh, in the eastern part of our alliance in the three Baltic countries and, uh, and uh, uh, Poland. Uh, the U.S. Uh, also briefed on their presence, which uh, uh, complement the NATO presence, meaning uh, the U.S. will uh, uh, increase their presence in, in Europe. And, uh, and the U.S. briefed on uh, that an increased presence with the European Reassurance Initiative, uh, in addition to what we do in, in, in the NATO uh, framework. Um, uh, we will, of course, uh, brief and inform and invite international observers, including uh, Russia, to ob observe our exercises uh, according to all the uh, agreements and standards uh, for inviting international observers. And very often we also invite, even when we're not obliged uh, to uh, invite, when the exercises are uh, not big enough to, to reach the thresholds, but we also invite very often to even smaller exercises. So, so we, we will be transparent. Uh, we, we, we strongly advocated this uh, NATO-Russia Council meeting uh, where one of the main items was military activity, transparency, risk reduction, exactly to inform them directly and also be able to answer questions directly on our military uh, presence uh, in the eastern part of the airlines. Last question, TV Poland. Hello, uh, I just wanted to ask you about uh, Russian, especially Russian reaction on your conclusion of NATO summit. What was this uh, reaction and uh, how, han how have you uh, reinforced, uh, sorry, how have you 
convinced Russia that it was not against Russia. And was there any discussion after your conclusion about NATO summit? We had an open, a frank uh, discussion, and the atmosphere in the meeting was good, but we didn't agree. Uh, of course, we uh, still see uh, disagreements uh, between Russia and NATO when it comes to uh, the analysis, the assessments uh, of uh, why we are in the situation we are. Uh, for NATO, it's obvious that the, an increased or enhanced NATO presence in the eastern part of the alliance is something that is a direct response uh, to the uh, actions of uh, Russia in uh, Ukraine uh, illegally annexing Crimea. Because before Crimea, before Ukraine, that was not enhanced NATO presence in the eastern part of the alliance was not on our agenda. So there's no doubt that that is something that happens after Ukraine, and it was Russia's actions in Ukraine that triggered uh, the, the, uh, the presence. Um, um, but again, I think especially when we disagree, and especially when we see that tensions uh, uh, increases, and especially when we see more military activity and more uh, or enhanced or increased risks for incidents and accidents, especially then it is important that we meet, exchange views, explain, clarify, uh, respond to answers, and try to find ways uh, to uh, increase trust and to uh, develop mechanisms, transparency, uh, to uh, uh, avoid incidents and accidents. Thank you for coming to this press conference. This is all we have time for. Thank, Thank you so much. Always a good pleasure.